last week we got into a little bit of a, a talk about Blake Bortles and, and Marquise Lee. Um, and I wanted to bring kind of that back around and have a full form discussion about, you know, the Jaguars and how surprising the the nine and four record is right now. And, and, you know, leading that division and, and, you know, nobody, I don't think anybody really wants to see them in the playoffs here and just want to discuss this, this kind of team as a whole and, and who they have moving forward and, you know, who, who we're excited about and, and all that. Um, so let's get right into the, the quarterback, the guy who's leading this team, uh, last week, me and Jay Wayne were kind of bury that, him. Yeah, not buried him, but <laughs> said that there's there's pretty much no way that we thought that the Jaguars would move forward really next year with Blake Bortles being the guy who is you know leading this offense. And and Big Co was was why saying not? that well, you know why not? And they do have uh, the option of um, they 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 signed his fifth year option. They can basically cut him before eighteen with no ramifications. Um, but they owe him nineteen million dollars, basically. Which, if you're gonna, maybe you're gonna draft a young quarterback at that point, and maybe you move forward with with Blake Bortles for one year for nineteen mil, which right. really isn't a terrible deal anymore uh, in the in, you know in the uh, grand scheme of things here. Um, we buried him, and Big Co was like, "Am I right? Yeah. Am I so? right? Am I right? Yeah. So? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, had to get it in. So, let's continue that conversation. So you you're a, a firm believer of of Blake Bortles being the the quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars next year, or or no, I just was. You guys said it wasn't possible, and I was like, wait a minute. I mean, it's it's possible because they're winning games with him right now. Two years ago, he had forty touchdowns, and you can't take that away from him. And lost a little magic, looked horrible. Not gonna lie, but they got a winning formula now, and they're just you know. Like you said, nobody wants to play him in this playoffs. Why in the world would you want to go up against a defense like that can beat you? If you do get past them, you definitely don't want to play again the next week. Um, Jags are just – they hit hard and they get after the quarterback and they cause turnovers. They're leading the league in sacks. And they got Jalen Ramsey, so that's going to take two guys off your offense right there. He, this dude's guarding two guys at one time. I mean, <laughs> why in the world do you want to play against Boy, the Jaguars? Boy, he's picking off – Balls like Crabtree's sure. chains from Tlaib. <laughs> Just snatching them things away from yeah. quarterbacks. Well, they, they went out and they, they built a, a defense around Blake Bortles. Uh, so they, you know, So they didn't have to get into shootouts and win those shootouts. They don't have to count on Blake Bortles to win those shootouts, to win those games. They, they, they promoted a former offensive lineman, the offensive line coach, uh, to be their head coach. And got the offensive line kind of situated and playing well. So they, and then they, with their first two picks, they drafted a franchise cornerstone running back who can be a workhorse in Leonard Fournette. And then they went and took Cam Robinson. So they kind of bolstered up the two ends of things to basically not put it on the shoulders of Blake Bortles, who at times has lacked a ton of confidence. And yeah. I think that's the biggest problem with him and, and moving forward. Like, you know, he, he looks good right now, but really. How good does he look? I guess well, is my but there's been a lot of built what you do, there's been a lot of blocks putting that wall back together for that confidence. And part of it was the the adoption of a philosophy. First of all, you bring in old school Tom Coughlin, and you like you said, you got a you got an offensive lineman for a head coach, and it's just like let's power grade you and on on the offensive side of the ball, we're going to come at you with a generational talent running back, just runs faster for his size than anybody we've seen in a long time. He's going to pop you so hard. And then you got a good play action pass off of that. And then the defense that they built, it's just all of this stuff that was put in place to try to win despite a good, you know, a bad quarterback. And like you said, you know, like we talked about with other teams with bad quarterbacks and you've, you've seen teams go through and be successful in the playoffs because it's cold. It's late in the season. Teams are beat up. Anybody, the best team, the best defense is usually winning late in the year. And you add a good running game behind that, and a strong sense of hey, this is this is where our team's headed. At least we know we're going to pound the rock. We got we put put our money where our mouth is. We bring in the big time running back. We got some studs on defense. We got the most blues in PFF. Mm. You know, we got the most j blue chip prospects on the defensive side of the ball in the NFL right blues now. Blues are good scores on PFF. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. good. You know, so I just. And why not Blake Bortle build that confidence back yep. up slowly? Why not if you're the Jags explore any and all options to improve that quarterback situation if you can? I'm just not. I don't say. I don't feel like they have to. But if so, there is a big time quarterback market this year for free agency, and there's a bunch of them in the draft, which the Jags thank goodness for the Jags. They're not at the front of the draft class this year. They don't. You know. 
If you you can only hope to play yourself out of the top right. five pick every year. True. And, you know, unless you're the Browns and you just love them so you can keep screwing them up. And well, that's part of the reason why this defense is kind of where it is is because they were able to invest in some elite kind of talent players and some of them panned out, some of them didn't. They right. took, took some stabs with kind of Miles Jack kind of guys and mm-hmm. then they had a Dante Fowler who missed some times and he's kind of – Figuring it out still, and then they invested in some guys in free agency, which was where your boy is. And that's came always in. a dice roll, though. Right. And th- th- I feel like it just has worked out player after player after player, especially free agency. How many times you see a free agency guy, you know, free agent get picked up and get paid a lot of money and just hardly yeah. even play ball? Well, the secondary is is the the two guys on the outside are so good, and then so you, good. you invested in Barry Church and uh, Tayshawn Gibson from Cleveland. Uh, to play your other safety position. So you got, and then Calais Campbell's might be the defensive player of the year. Right. Uh, and then you had Malik Jackson from that, you know, Denver team, team that crushed a couple of years ago. Yep. They still have Paul Puzlowski, whatever his name is. Puzlowski. Te- Tevin Smith yeah. is out there. He's missed a couple of games, but they, this is a really solid defense. Um, you got Blake Bortles, who's, you know, had a bunch of different coordinators and now you got Marone in there, and he promoted Hackett, who them boys have been together for a while. They spent seven years in a row together at from Syracuse to Buffalo, uh, and now they're back together over here. Uh, Hackett's a, a, a son of a former uh, West Coast kind of guy who was in San Francisco 49ers around 83, 85 when that Walsh a uh, whole mm-hmm. West Coast thing was percolating, and you're seeing a lot of that in this offense is you know, kind of what they're going a little kind of – Quicker passes, getting the ball out, a lot of drags and slants, and then you'll take your and and check downs to the you know running back, and, and we'll run the ball a good amount, and we'll take our shots here and there. And you know Blake has said that he's you know been working on his footwork, and and since that Ravens game is I believe where he said you know he just found himself easier to kind of repeat his performance over and over again, and, and you know it's all just been kind of clicking to him. Um, and I think he's around a sixty percent passer this year, which you know, obviously the year's not over, but if it did finish now, this would be the highest mm-hmm. percentage of completions that he's had. It's not by much, but, you know, he's around 57, 58 uh, career or so. Um, so it's just, it's interesting to me um, with the whole Blake Bortles thing. But I guess my question is, is just, you know, how, how, how well is he playing? Or is it that they're, the you know, they know that Leonard Fournette's back there. They know they want to pound it for the most part. So they're stacking these boxes. And it, he should have perfectly easy, spongy windows to throw it into, uh, you know, time after time again. Sure. So, you know, I, I guess that, that that's – but, I mean, if that's what you're going to do. You saw this with Alex Smith in the beginning of the season where then nobody was scared and then all of a sudden Alex Smith was tossing it all over the place and everything just kind of opened up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um you saw this with kind of D.D. Westbrook um, in, in this last game where, you know, D.D., they were kind of – everyone was a little tight and they were running a little bit of a spongy kind of soft zone. D.D. ran a drag and kind of sucked in like he may or may not have been blocking and all three guys that were in that zone kind of crashed down and then D.D. busted that thing back out into the corner and was just wide open. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Bortles had the time. Bortles had plenty of time and, and delivered a and good an ball. easy and an, yeah, and had confidence to deliver it in that area because he saw all that kind of breakdown. And you know, it's a, I can't not going to take anything away from Bortles, but you know, I feel like you could probably find somebody else who could do that. I don't know, right? And, and offer <laughs> and offer you more upside that. than Blake Bortles has kind of shown in the in, in, you know throughout his young career. I don't know. Well, so last week I came on and I basically tried to bury Blake Bortles. So I'm not I'm not and I'm not ready to back off of that either because I mean he did have a good game. Like he they them boys beat up Seattle. The score looks closer than that game was. Um it was actually a pretty close game throughout the whole first half and then and then the Jags defense kind of took over special teams, got him to the one yard line. Bortles threw, you know, Keelan Cole, it caught a nice touchdown pass. He just broke down that D D pass. Bortles had time and when he has time and he's and in, confidence, which is like the right. biggest thing of a quarterback that you could possibly have. And you and took it back needed. to the Ravens game. Like he's been building this confidence for several games now. And so he's playing pretty good. Like he has a good arm. He can he can throw a decent ball. But like he was never really tested in this game. He was never really pressured. In the face he, of adversity. He hasn't had to win the game for these dudes. When they get into this play when they get into the playoffs, like you need your quarterback 
to deliver Seattle at was times. shorthanded on some of the on you know, defense, right? No, no. Uh, and on the road, they're not typically as good. You know, West Jag- Coast team coming playing at one. If the Jags continue to win, then maybe they don't have to go on the road too much. But you know, eventually, you're probably the Jags are probably going to have to go on the road, whether it's to New England or to Pittsburgh, which they took care of business in Pittsburgh. But, right, but well, Bortles they threw them it off five times. Bortles threw it literally a total of like twelve or fourteen times in that right. game, and they mm-hmm. picked Roethlisberger off five times. He threw five picks, and he was about to be ready to be done after that game after yeah. facing this defense. But you guys broke down their whole team, their defense, what they've been doing. Man, can this team draft wide receivers? It's ridiculous. And for all of those reasons, like, why wouldn't you go find someone better than Blake Bortles? I, I just, I, I'm sticking well, with it. I still don't think he's the I'm, dude I'm, here next. That's year. kind of my bottom line as well. Like, you have all these pieces don't in the squander defense this around him. You know, with Blake Bortles, because it's gonna come. There's gonna come a time where your quarterback needs, needs to make to a win play, the game for you, or at least make a play. Maybe not. Like Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. He didn't have to make too many plays because, like you said, defense shows up this time of year and can win true. for you. They travel. That you know, they're not gonna have these typically don't have the bad games that a quarterback could experience, whether it's offensive line being banged up or super solid pass rush that he's going against. Um, yeah, well, but there's going to come a time when Blake Bortles is going to have to like do something with this confidence in, in, in a in tight a big, space, in a, big, in a moment. big moment. And I just... I don't, I don't know. Maybe well, he'll pra- come through. I mean, you but gotta, You got to practice getting to those big moments. When, Bra- when Blake Bortles... When he was drafted, he was drafted. Remember when it hadn't been too long ago? Every single week you wanted to play somebody on your fantasy team going against the Jags? Yeah. You know, hadn't been very long since you were picking up what quarterbacks off the waiver wire to plug them in because they had the Jags, you know? So, like, he's – and before this year, and last year was supposed to be different because they brought in a fir- the first round of, hey, right. let's, let's improve this defense. But before this year, it was never okay to punt. You know, it was like, hey, we got to press the ball. We got to do something. You're young, but you can run. Get out of the pocket. Make a play. Extend the play. Try not to get sacked a million times. You're big. You can get hit. You know, you're you're. We've took you very high in the draft. We got all the confidence, and you know, we need you. You're our savior. It's like now, it. You know, that unfortunately, he got Stu ran got into, benched in the in, in the he beginning got, of the he, year, right? He got ran. Yeah, he got ran into the ground from a team that was just the hapless Jags who've com- uh, gone through a quick, awesome, cool little conversion here. To where you know there's there's the defense can win them ball games. We you know saw the Vikings win them games last year. Uh, their their defense, the defense for the Jags, just been fantasy darlings. If you got the 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 Jags defense on your fantasy team, you you probably you know if you have any other good players, you're probably leading the league in points because they're tripling up everybody in fantasy right. points scored. Uh, you know them and the Ravens, and it's just like all those things add up to. All right, just take that check down. Take what the defense gives you. Use that field position that your defense can give you to get to a W because how many times do we hear a guy that gets good stats that's losing say, I just want to win? Or if they did win and they're like, hey, you threw for four touchdowns, like, well, my guys played good and we got the W. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, so the best thing that Blake Bortles can do is continue to help this team win. And that's what matters. His numbers and and all this other right. effectiveness is not a bit. A W is a W, and there's your effective quarterback. Yeah, the Jags don't care how they got the W. Right. So well, they're not used to winning. There's still a house divided here on Blake Bortles a little bit, but you know quarterbacks don't grow on trees. So mm-hmm. and you've seen True. a little bit of development from Blake Bortles and not be a huge turnover machine, which is it's good the Blake be- Bortles that we've seen. There's been pick sixes out the yin yang with this yeah. guy. Yeah. And that's yeah. just what you're trying to avoid. And it, it's been a lot better. Like you said, he's got it's, pieces around him that, that can help him, you know, not have to force it down the field. And it's okay to give it to the defense and, and just take what they give you and uh, get out of there without giving the other team good field position. Exactly. It's nice to be talking about Blake Bortles on a confidence high for once, I yep. guess. So speaking of a confidence high, let's take a break. We'll be back with some more Jaguars talk. 